Now, Tom is to be for one and a half minutes. Madam President, Commissioner, Foreign Minister, since uh, yesterday, more than 6,000 migrants arrived to the Spanish enclave, Ceuta. Almost 30,000 people have arrived to the Union through one of the Mediterranean routes during the first five months of this year, of which almost half arrived to Italy. More than 600 migrants have died trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea. Perhaps the real numbers we will never know. It is clear that we need, and it's our obligation, to rescue distressed people at sea. But we must also effectively combat migrant smuggling networks, which cold-heartedly put vulnerable people's lives at risk, also leading to increased irregular migration. We need a closer cooperation with third countries to combat, investigate, and prosecute human traffickers. The impunity must end. We also need a better functioning EU migration policy, effective external border controls, fair and swift asylum procedures, and efficient return of those not granted stay. We must distinguish between asylum seekers in need of protection and irregular migrants. There is no time to wait. The Council must start acting. There is not getting easier to unbreak the deadlock if we wait we need to start to talk now. Thank you, grazie. Uh, is... Thank you very much. And now Pietro Bartolo for one minute. Signor Presidente. President, Commissioner, good afternoon. Every time there's a new tragedy in the Mediterranean, we go through this ridiculous and painful ritual. There will be another Nuremberg in the future, but unlike in the past, today we know what's going on. I've had enough. If we can't deal with the issue, let's stop being hypocritical. What's the point of institutions and places of political and democratic representation if they can't manage big issues such as this. Let's be clear. Here and outside, there are those who fake pity and think in a cynical manner. There are member states who tie our hands, preventing us from launching the reform of the Dublin regulation, establishing a naval force, naval force to carry out rescue operations, or adapting, adopting a common migration policy to prevent more deaths at sea. In Lampedusa, where I come from, I've looked young people and children in the eye while they were getting off makeshift boats. These were people who'd made it. They hadn't drowned. We're still here. We're still talking, but what are we talking about? Thank you. Thank you. And now, Nicola Danti for one and a half minutes. President, Signora Commissario. Commissioner, Minister, colleagues, during the last year and a half, the pandemic has put migration into the second level. It's become, a, it's gone down the list of important issues. We, however, need a definitive response here, basing ourselves on the moral and legal obligation to save lives at sea, also using European search and rescue operations. Now, we had the first tragedies in 2015. A boat sank with over 300 people on board. And subsequent to that, Italy recovered that boat so that it would act as a warning to European consciences. But it hasn't worked because we're still talking and crying over a similar tragedy. The Asylum and Migration Pact presented by the Commission is short-sighted and simply leaves member states at the borders of Europe with the responsibility. We need to be braver in order to deal with the migration issue in all its complexities. While the only way to reach Europe is a makeshift vessel launched by human traffickers, we and our consciences will constantly face 
defeat. We need legal channels for migration. That's the only way we can provide a message of hope, defeat the traffickers and deal with an issue that is increasing in scope. Europe needs to deal with this challenge or it faces defeat. Thank you. And now Jack Madison for one and a half minutes. And uh, Mr. Johansson, uh, first of all, if you're looking at the numbers about the migration flow to Italy, 2017 it was 117,153, 2018, 23,037 people, and 10 to 19, only 11,471 people, and it started to raise again last year, 34,000 migrants uh, went to Italy. What happened between? In between that, 2018 and 19, the Minister of Interior Affairs in Italy was Matteo Salvini, who just closed all the harbors to the foreign ships who were carrying the people without any identification, without any background, so they couldn't control who they are, where they're coming from, are they real refugees, are they criminals, are they terrorists? And what we are doing here in this house is we are attacking Frontex, who should protect the EU foreign border, and we are attacking them because they are doing their own job. And most of us here in this chamber are saying that we should continue with an open border policy and we should just let them in because otherwise they are dying. But the problem is that if you don't close the borders, then you, you are just donating the human traffickers who are earning billions of euros with this business and more and people will still die. And actually, that is your fault. It's the fault of the Commission, it's the fault of the, all the leftists and liberals here who are just saying about solidarity and tolerance. They are telling us that we need like, more solidarity, but at the same time, of course, they will not open their own home doors for those people. They are saying that we have to do it. So it means that other people have to do it, not themselves who are living in a nice area with a good salary. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's Tineke Strix for one minute. Chair, Council and Commission, 10 years ago the world was shocked about the left to die boat, a boat that was not rescued in the Mediterranean Sea, which led to the death of 63 people. Since then, however, many more people have drowned, despite the clear obligations of maritime law to go to the rescue and disembark people in a safe haven. The Libyan ports are no safe haven. We know that migrants are sent to awful detention centers where they suffer from torture and even slavery. The EU funds and trains the Libyan Coast Guard. And this outsourcing policy makes the fate of pullback migrants a European responsibility. It's high time that we comply with our obligations and our values at the external borders, ensure search and rescue and disembarkation at European ports. And this is a common European responsibility. The biggest task now for the EU as a whole is ensuring that lives are safe and responsibility for asylum seekers are equally shared. Otherwise, we will not have a common asylum policy. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And now, Beata Kempa for one minute. Pani Przewodnicząca, Pani Komisarz, Pani Minister, President, Commissioner, Minister. The human lives that we are trying to protect today count. Every life, almost 700 people lost their lives in the Mediterranean this year. And I think under the figures we have the human tragedies. They don't say anything about the pain of people who have lost their husband, their children. We need to unconditionally help everyone who needs help. But our empathy must be transformed into a specific tool to the uh, fight against traffickers who are exposed exploiting those vulnerable people who are looking for a better life. We 
talk about uh, climate change, which has an influ influence on uh, migration, wars, which cause people to leave. But there are people who take advantage of such wars and uh, leave people to die in the Mediterranean and, and then uh, uh, assistance for development and uh, the migration pact. One, so I will start to um, um, stop the clock on all of you once you go over time. Next is Georgios Georgiou for one minute. Listen to me, Ms. Johansson. For three weeks now, uh, people were lost at sea. They were putting uh, seawater on uh, their uh, shoes to try not to uh, die uh, of, uh, of thirst. This is what Aisha said after a rescue. Unfortunately, this is not the first or last story of this type. People losing their lives trying to reach the shores of Europe, this paradise. That's how Europe is presented. Those people uh, leave behind them uh, parents and siblings so that their children can come here too. 500 people have died in the Mediterranean. Uh, very cold figures. At a time where the center of humanity is uh, dying in the Mediterranean. Issana del Kelma lil lefteris Nicolau Alavanos. Lefteris Nicolau Alavanos now for a minute. Well, the new pact on migration and asylum of the European Union is necessary. We need to distribute responsibilities between member states. But what we're doing there is boosting the numbers of refugees that are being closed in reception centres. We have the Dublin regulation as well, but that doesn't seem to work. And what we're seeing is simply imprisonment and torture for migrants and refugees. We're seeing pushbacks being carried out with the assistance of Frontex, which endangers the lives of migrants. But there's no response to what's going on. People simply blame each other. Frontex is being reinforced militarily. And we're violating the rights of member states to protect their borders. We should close all these reception centers and not build new ones. And refugees need to be put in appropriate reception centers with rapid procedures. Mr. Zoido Alvarez for a minute and a half. Gracias, President. Thank you, President. Yesterday, over 6,000 migrants, uh, 1,500 of them children and one person died, uh, crossed the Ceuta border. That's the border between Europe and Africa, while the M Moroccan guards looked on. This is a result of the dreadful uh, external policy of uh, Sanchez's uh, policy to uh, Morocco. Morocco shows the need for cooperation on migration, intelligence, uh, fighting against uh, organized, uh, organized crime. So all governments, socialists and uh, conservatives, have worked closely uh, together with Morocco up until now. The uh, Sanchez government, supported by the uh, populists of Podemos, has gone a different route. Sanchez is allowing the uh, entry of the leader of the Polisario Front into Spain, who is accused of crimes against humanity. 
Sanchez is therefore undermining the uh, re relations of uh, Spain and the EU with m m with Morocco. So I would ask the European Commission to help us get relations with Morocco between Morocco and Spain back on the right path again and not allow Sanchez to uh, uh, to do uh, to work in this way. Thank you Bettina Volat for a minute. In the Mittelmeer, over 17 More than 17,000 people have died in the Mediterranean. We've had many debates in this plenary and today saying exactly the same thing every time that we need to put an end uh, to this uh, loss of life, uh, but without success so far. So I would like to remind you that it's not about figures, it's about people. We need true solutions. It's about people uh, such as Rehan Kurdi and uh, his uh, sons Gallip and Aylan washed up corpses on the uh, uh, on the beach. Safi Siap, who never uh, reached the age of two because she drowned off Lesbos. Mido Mohammed, whose uh, boat never reached the Spanish coast. Darin Dida, Shia, Amina and Dijwa Rasid, five siblings under 13 uh, years old, uh, died uh, before the gates of Europe. I would need days to get through the whole list. Sandro Gozi for a minute and a half. Sandro Gozi for a minute and a half. Thank you, President. Mediterranean, uh, the Mediterranean is the cradle of European civilization, but it has become a graveyard because of the myopia of many Europeans. European is too divided. For me, there's a very simple principle that is valid. If someone's at risk at sea, they should be saved, quite apart from naval blockades or anything else. But the real problem is not saving people at sea. The problem is where they should be disembarked once they've been rescued. Libya is not a safe place. Legally speaking, the problem is that states with maritime borders are subject to the Dublin regulations, which need to be dealt with. Then you have a long-term problem. You need to, we need to work with countries of origin to dismantle traffickers' networks, also using cooperation policies. That's crucial. We need to manage economic migration together. Reactivating the Malta agreements from 2009 and distributing migrants between member states who showed goodwill is the only immediate solution. The Commission needs to provide European funding to ensure speeded up procedures and we need to provide funding to those countries that cooperate with re, with a re, re people being sent back to their country. We need to take our responsibilities on board. Let's be European and let's show it. Thank you, Tom van den Drusche, for a minute. Dear colleagues, in recent years we've seen enormous migration flows, borders have closed because of COVID and the figures have fallen. I think that's the proof that another migration policy is possible. Now we are seeing in the southern people arriving by thousands on the southern borders they leave from the African coast to get into our countries on an irregular basis. We shouldn't repeat our mistakes. We need a change of paradigm on migration policy, as has happened in Australia. People who enter Europe illegally should lose all possibility of migration and asylum. That's the only way to break this vicious circle. The Mediterranean should not be a route for illegal migration. Things need to change. We need a, a, a policy of good sense. Esler. Carlo Ressler for a minute and a half. Thank you, Madam Vice President. Despite all the challenges Europe is facing, the reform of EU migration laws cannot be postponed and new tragedies cannot be neglected. 
States with external borders still face high migratory pressure and face the risk of becoming hotspots. We cannot risk another crisis like the one we saw in 2015. Tragic outcomes we witness at sea have to be avoided. Some progress has been made. The package presented last September was not a work from scratch, but has developed from previous experiences that we have to take into account. We now have to take this opportunity to continue on the progress. The Parliament is ready to do the work, and we expect from our colleagues in the Council the move towards compromise. All the pieces of the puzzle are on the table. Better protection of external borders, efficient asylum procedures where we distinguish between refugees and economic migrants, humane reception conditions for refugees, effective returns and better cooperation with third countries. Now it's time to act. Thank you very much, Mr. Ressler. Dietmar Koster, for a minute, please. Flüchtlingsabwehr statt taking refugees back instead of rescue. Instead of rescue ships, the EU is sending uh, Frontex aircraft into the Mediterranean. Uh, Frontex uh, is uh, using the pullback uh, system, uh, working together systematically uh, with the uh, Libyan Coast Guard. The consequences are zero. Last uh, Thursday, the 27-year-old uh, refugee uh, Mohammed uh, was in court in Lesbos. I'm afraid we can no longer hear the speaker. Mr. Costa, your, your microphone is on. He was uh, he was given a, a custodial sentence. That's bitter reality. If we want to do something to overcome this uh, uh, crisis in the Mediterranean, then I call upon the Commission and the Council. Please organize a, a rescue program. Thank you. Janine Lacapelle for a minute. Nous débattons aujourd'hui des morts. We are debating recent deaths in the Mediterranean, which are a result of a lack of protection from the European institutions. But this is actually you are to blame for this because it is you who vote to keep the uh, bridges open to migrant, migrants. You are legally uh, and morally behind Frontex. You supported the uh, captain of Sea-Watch. You say that migrants come towards Europe and take the risk of dying, but you are encouraging them. Real Solidarity is what's needed, not your hypocritical charity uh, where we present Europe as the El Dorado for the third world. We should, like the Australians, uh, uh, construct a dissuasive policy, control borders, expelling clandestine migrants uh, as the Australians have done. It's dissuasion which will prevent new tragedies in the Mediterranean. Thank you. Cyrus Endera for a minute now, please. Thank you, President. The number of deaths in the Mediterranean that some of us call home this year is already close to 700 people, the same number of deputies in this parliament. Imagine those 700 human beings seated in this chamber telling us what led them to embark on those fancy boats. Why did they see those boats with all the risks they bring? as being safer than their everyday realities. Security is a fundamental human right. The European solution to these debts has been prayers and that of throwing money at the challenge. Meanwhile, we leave those countries at the European border alone, notwithstanding that the border is a European one, belonging to all of us. 
How many more bodies are we going to count in the Mediterranean? We need a European search and rescue system coordinated by member states that also looks at sharing the refugee burden among all member states. Thank you. Thank you. Telvo Hakkarainen now for a minute, please. Thank you, President. Well, the first feeling when people drown is sadness, but who's to blame? In the European Europe Union, our crazy humanism is to blame because our borders are open if we say that's it, we're not taking anyone else into Europe, then the drowning would stop. No one would leave their country of origin. There are associations working off the coast of Libya. They're enticing people to leave. And if we simply didn't help these people come to Europe, then there'd be fewer who would leave. We need to send people back to where they came from. But like children, we believe that the European Union can receive the tens of millions of people who are just waiting for the right moment to come to Europe. Thank you. Before I pass the microphone to the Commission,